of that breaking news, the mass shooting that happened at the Kroger in Collierville. Take a look. This is the map of where the Kroger is located because there are two Kroger locations in Collierville. This shooting happened at the location on New by Hillier Road and Poplar Avenue. And here's what we know at this hour. The shooter killed one person and hurt 12 others. Collierville police confirming the shooter was someone who worked inside the store who had been fired that morning. Then he returned around 1.30 in the afternoon and started shooting. Police say the gunman died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. As of our last check-in with Regional 1, the hospital had nine patients from the shooting, four in critical condition and five in non-critical. And it took just minutes for Collierville police to respond to that shooting. On the screen is video from one of our viewers, Ian Dungan. He posted it to Facebook. You could see the officers walking into the store, not knowing what they would find inside. We have live team coverage for you this Friday morning in just hours. We are expecting Collierville police to have another news conference at 10 to update us on the progress of their investigation about what exactly unfolded inside the Kroger grocery store. Our Jalen Sochek is live from there now with a look at the scene. Jalen, catch us up. Yeah, John, right now still very quiet investigation happening this morning as they have not really resumed it beginning in the early hours. But what we have seen is a number of people become begin to pick up their cars that they were left overnight. You can see right behind me, you know, there's probably about just around two dozen vehicles still parked inside of that crime scene area that they have blocked off of the parking lot here at the Kroger. Um, you know, there's going to be vic victims cars. There are also going to be people that may have just gotten picked up by a friend and a loved one returning this morning to get them. Now, right Right now, police are not releasing any information about the shooter or a motive, but again, our source inside of the Collierville Police Department does say that the shooter was working inside of the Kroger and had been fired before returning at 1.30 yesterday afternoon. Uh, when those shots did first ring out, police say about 44 Kroger employees were inside working at the time, and they're not really sure how many customers were also inside there as well. But when they were going through aisles, they found both workers and customers hiding in places like in freezers until they were able to get them out to safety. Now, Collierville's chief, Dale Lane, says they just went through an active shooter training about two months ago. He says going through that helped them save lives yesterday. Uh, today, what, what the result was, was victims were able to get medical treatment much faster because of the integration between police and fire. And our partners come in, everyone knew uh, very proud of our police officers. Now, this Kroger would normally open at 7 this morning. Of course, it's going to remain closed indefinitely as police do continue their investigation, John. Jalen Tochak reporting for us live in Collierville this morning. Jalen, thank you. This morning, our hearts certainly with the victims of yesterday's tragic shooting. And we're also learning more about the woman killed at the Kroger store. This is a picture of Olivia King with their youngest son, Wes. Wes tells us his family is devastated by the senseless act of violence, and they're asking for your prayers this morning. He also said he believes the 70 year old went to daily mass before going to the grocery store only to be killed. Several other victims are still in the hospital this morning after yesterday's tragedy. Malik Jackson continues our team coverage live from Regional 1 this morning. Malik, good morning. Good morning, John, and yes, we are here, and I think it's really important, as we've done this morning, to remember the life, at least one right now, that has been lost. That is Olivia King. Her son wrote a truly powerful message talking about the moments after finding out that his mother had been shot and killed in Kroger. He said that she was shot in the chest. He found that directly from a trauma surgeon, and he went on to say, and you'll see on your screen right here, he wrote a little longer post, and we're going to read part of that to you. I apologize for the graphic details details, but this type of crime needs to stop being glossed over and sanitized. No one deserves this. He went on to say, but we please need prayers for mom and the rest of the victims. As hard as it might be, that God might have mercy on the soul of the person who committed this terrible crime. And you can see that full post on our website. As for the victims that remain in the hospital, what we know right now, 
Four of them remain in critical condition, while six are stable. Nine of those victims were taken to regional, which is right behind me. We reached out to the hospital this morning, and we have not heard back. But it's an important thing to note that regional one that you see behind me is a trauma hospital. So they are prepared for a higher influx of patients while also being able to treat the most severe injuries. So the staff here was prepared for yesterday's truly unfortunate events. There was also a victim of the shooting that was rushed into surgery when that person arrived at Methodist. The status of that victim is still unknown. We also know from the chief of police down in Collier that the hospital after having oh, one person checked themselves in the hospital after having an anxiety attack resulting from being inside of that Kroger when shots begin to ring out. And as we learn more, like I said, we reached out to the hospitals to check in on those conditions of the victims that remain in the care of the medical professionals behind me. And as we learn more, we will make sure to bring that to you on air and online. Live from Regional 1, I'm Malik Jackson. John. Malik, thank you for that. Reporting live from Regional 1 this morning, our team coverage continues now with Rebecca Butcher, who talked with people outside the store about their terrifying experience. Rebecca learned some just narrowly escaped from the store as shots rang out. He kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my coworkers in the head and then shot one of my one of the customers in the stomach. Horrifying moments for Kroger shoppers and employees. Employee Bridgetta Dickerson says the man shot in the head was miraculously alert after asking for someone to call his mom. Dickerson, who's worked at Kroger for nearly 33 years, began ringing up a customer when the gunfire began. I was just in the middle of checking somebody else until I heard the gunshot. And when I heard the gunshots, that's when I told everybody to run. She and a group ran for safety toward the back of the store. Dickerson says at one point the shooter left and came back inside. She quickly acted to save her life. When you see a bear, you know what they tell you when you see the bear? Play dead. So I play dead. Dickerson also said she never imagined this sort of thing could happen in the peaceful town of Collierville. I'm a little bit still kind of a little shaky, but I'm okay. I got, I got God on my side and I'm, I'm, okay. I'm okay. I spoke to a woman off camera. She was just going into Kroger really quickly here in Collierville to buy a balloon. When the gunfire erupted at first, she thought that was the sound of balloons popping. When I first got to the scene, I saw two men praying and bracing one another. That shows you a lot about the community here in Collierville. Of course, our thoughts and our prayers are with the victims and their family. In Collierville, I'm Rebecca Butcher. 609, the time for you to have viewer Tony Sarwar posted this video to Facebook telling us he just arrived to the shopping center when he saw people rushing out of that Kroger. You can see a man being treated for his injuries at the scene. Sarwar says that he found out about the shooting from two women who had just made it out of the store. They thought they were like they heard a pop and when they heard the pop, they thought it was just simply a a uh, a balloon going off. Everybody, I think, in the place thought there was balloons going off. Nobody thought this. Nobody was prepared for this. Nobody uh, was, you know, hyper vigilant in this situation. They moved casually, and um, and it wasn't until the second round uh, of pops that everybody really get out of there and um, really get to moving. But the first time, everybody just heard the pop and thought it was just simply a balloon going off. Meanwhile, Kroger issuing a statement on the shooting, saying that they are deeply saddened by the incident that happened at the Kroger store. The entire Kroger family offering thoughts, prayers, and support to the individuals and families of the victims during this difficult time. Go on, going on, rather, to say that they are cooperating with local law enforcement who have secured the store and parking lot. The store remains closed while the police investigate, and we have initiated counseling services for our associates. Carrierville High School intends to hold a moment of silence today. The game will go on against Whitehaven as scheduled. They will have a maroon out, they said, and they're also asking students at Carrierville High School to wear maroon as a show of solidarity. Well, even as the state reels from this mass shooting, Memphis police responding to another deadly shooting last night. This one happening at a FedEx facility on Democrat Road. You can see that highlighted on the map here on the screen. A victim taken to the hospital, then pronounced dead there. Officers have detained two people, not releasing their names just yet. We will continue to follow the story and update you on air and online as soon as those details come into the newsroom. 
Local and state officials were very quick to respond to yesterday's horrific shooting. Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris saying in part, our hearts go out to the victims and families of those affected by the mass shooting. We must embrace the residents of our community as we all sort through this tragedy. We must also work together to prevent these ongoing senseless acts of violence. Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland saying in part, our hearts go out to our neighbors in Collierville who are facing the pain of this tragic event in their community. I want to thank our police and fire departments who answered the call to assist. We pray for the victims and their families. Lakeland's Mayor Mike Cunningham took to Facebook and said on behalf of the city of Lakeland, I want to extend our sincere condolences and prayers to all of the victims of the events that happened at the Kroger Everyone, please say a prayer for our sister city. State Senator Ramesh Akbari issuing a statement saying that my heart aches for our families who are caught in yet another act of senseless gun violence. My family is praying for those victims and their caregivers, but it's going to take collective action from all of us to heal the scars of this tragedy moving forward. No one should have to watch over their shoulder at work or picking up groceries, this cannot be the cost of living in a free society. Congressman Steve Cohen of Memphis saying the shooting in Collierville is another horrific incident caused by someone who undoubtedly had mental health issues and a firearm. That's a deadly combination, he says. My thoughts are with the victims and their families and with all in Collierville and the greater Memphis community.